In this tutorial, I will show you how to do a manual composition with Python in ROS2 with several nodes, and also in a second part, how to use a multi-threaded executor. To get started with this, I have actually created a very basic, so I have created a package here in my workspace and I've created a very basic file. In this file I have, so what you have done so far probably is just to have one node, so one class. Here I have two nodes. I have node 1 and node 2. What I want to do is to create node 1 and node 2 and make them spin in the same executable. Okay, so instead of having one node per executable here, we will have two nodes in the same executable. And what I do in those nodes is quite uh, simple. I just create a timer and in the timer I print, uh, here I print callback 1 and here I print callback 2. And I have added an additional time.sleep with two seconds, okay? So usually you don't really do that. You don't want to spend a lot of time in your callback. But here for the purpose of this exercise, it's actually a good time to sleep in the callback to see what's gonna happen with the different executors, okay? So this one is gonna print CB1 every two seconds, and this one is gonna print CB2 every two seconds. So how to do the composition? Well, let's go to the main. And what do we do in the main? First, dot init, okay, I'm gonna put args is equal to args, okay, so we initialize ROS2 communication as usual. Then, as usual, we create the node object. So here we're gonna do node1 is equal to node1, and we create actually also node2 is equal to node2. Then the default way to make a node spin is to do rclpy.spin and provide the node. But here we are not going to do this. Here we are going to create an executor. So what's happening actually when you do rclpy.spin, what's happening behind the scenes is that it's gonna create an executor, it's gonna give the node to the executor and the executor is gonna be responsible to uh, process the different callbacks. So here, instead of using the normal spin, we need to create an executor ourselves and add the nodes to the executor. So I'm gonna go here and do from rclpy.executors import single threaded executor. We're gonna start with this one. So let's start an executor is equal to single threaded executor. Now that we have the executor, we need to add the nodes. So executor dot add node with node one and then executor dot add node with node two. You see, it's quite easy. And after I have added the nodes, I can do executor dot spin. You can see we have a spin method in the executor which is gonna make the node one and the node two spin with the same executor in the same executable. All right, so that's the, the spin mechanism. And then of course, after we exit from the spin, I'm gonna do rclpy.shutdown as we did previously. So the different thing here is instead of doing rclpy.spin, we create an executor, we add the nodes and we make the executor spin. The single threaded executor is the same as the normal executor, which means that those two nodes, so all the callbacks are gonna be processed in one single thread. Okay, so let's actually see, let's build this and see what it's gonna do. So I'm gonna go in my setup.py and create a executable very quick. So let's just name it composition. It's gonna be, so components tutorial, that's the name of the package dot composition, that's the file name, and the main function. Um, I'm gonna go to the terminal. Okay, uh, let's go to my workspace and do call on build. Okay, so it correctly worked. Let's source the workspace and let's do a clear here. And let's do ROS2 run comp so the name of the package is components tutorial, components tutorial with composition. What do we have? So you can see we have CB1, then CB1 again, and then CB2, CB1, CB2. Okay, let's wait a few more seconds and I'm gonna do control C right now. 
what happened? Well, first you can see we missed one CB2, but that's not really a problem here. What happened is you can see we have two seconds between each callback, okay? So if you look at this, we have a timer that should trigger CB1 every two seconds, and another timer that should trigger CB2 every two seconds. But if you look at the result, here you can see between this CB2 and this one here, we have actually four seconds, okay, 24 to 28, because we have another callback taking two seconds. So that's quite expected, okay? That's working as expected because we are in a single thread. So if one timer is stuck for two seconds, all the other timers are gonna be also stuck, okay? So the timers are gonna be late, which means all the callbacks are gonna be late. So this, of course, is exaggerated, but it's to show you what's gonna happen. Now I will use a different executor. So here I have the single threaded executor, but I can also use the multi-threaded executor, which, as you can guess, is gonna run uh, the callbacks in multi-thread, in different threads. So I'm gonna change that here, multi-threaded executor. So I just need to change this in the main and that's it. But then, if I use a multi-threaded executor, I need to also, in each node, I need to define some callback groups. And the callback groups are quite important to actually decide on which threads the callbacks are gonna be. So let's make a very simple example. I'm gonna do from groups import reentrant callback group. And I'm gonna create a callback group here. So self dot, let's call it CB group is equal to reentrant callback group. And then what I do is anytime I have something that's gonna have a callback, so for example, a timer, a subscriber, etc., I have an option, as you can see here, I have an option to provide a callback group. So self.cb group. So I will do this here in this node and I will do this in that node. Self.cb group is equal to reentrant. So reentrant callback group and I provide the callback group here. So what does reentrant mean? It means, so first we have a multi-threaded pool for uh, the different nodes and the different callbacks. But then with the reentrant callback, it means we can simply re-enter any callback that's in this group. So that means complete multi-threaded, okay? So every time you call a callback, it's gonna be executed in a new thread. And here that means two things. First, it means that we're gonna be able to execute this callback one and callback two in parallel, okay, with no uh, problem. But also, if you pay attention here, this timer here should fire every one second, okay? So it takes two seconds to do the timer one here. Okay? So what's happening is the next time we actually fire the timer one, we are still in the callback timer one. So if we are in one single thread for this one, we're gonna have to wait two seconds every time for the CB1 to be printed. With the reentrant callback group, we can re-enter also the same callback. So we will be able to call the callback timer one every one second. Okay, so you will see this uh, here. I will, well, I will go back and just do a build again, and then source, and then run. So what's happening here? What's happening here, you can see we have the callback one and two that are uh, triggered every one second, okay? Simply because here, every time we trigger a callback, we're gonna trigger this callback in a new thread. So no problem. We can do this one in parallel of this one and we can even do this one in parallel with itself. Okay, as you can see here with the timing, we have, for example, here 65 or callback one and two, and then 66, and then 67, etc., etc. And one more thing is, so you have the reentrant callback group, but you also have the mutually exclusive callback group. So let's use this instead, and let's see what is gonna happen. Mutually exclusive callback group, and so actually I'm gonna keep the reentrant here and the mutually exclusive here. The mutually exclusive callback group means you're gonna kind of create a sub single threaded executor. Okay, so in this case, we have two nodes with a multi-threaded executor, 
And for the callbacks in this group, the callbacks in this group are going to be executed in one single thread. Okay. And the callback in this group are going to be executed in as many threads as we want. So let's just run. So build source and run. And let's wait just a few seconds and see what's going to happen. And as you can see, so let's have a look at the callback two first. Callback two is still re-entrant. So here we have 75 and then 76 and then 77, 78, etc. So even if the callback takes two seconds, then every second we just trigger a new callback in a new thread. So no problem. Now let's look at the callback one. You can see here 74, but then 76 and then 78 then 80. So in this case, this callback is actually triggered every two seconds. Why? Because well, with this mutually exclusive callback group, this, so every callback that's in this group here is going to be executed in one single thread. So if this takes two seconds, then to execute the next one, we have to wait two seconds. Okay. So in this example here, you can see that this group and that group are going to be completely independent. So running in different threads and then depending on the callback group, then you have a different behavior. Okay. So you have seen how to use a single threaded executor, how to use a multi threaded executor with the different callback groups. And that's how you can create a manual composition with Python. And well, of course, how to decide what executor and what callback group to use. It's going to take some practice. Okay. It's not going to be uh, super easy at the beginning, but it's going to take some practice, but with experience, you will get to know better what group you should use for what callbacks. All right. And that's the end of this tutorial on manual composition with a multi-threaded executor. But this was quite quick as I just wanted to go to the point fast. So you can get a lot of value in a very short amount of time. Now, if you want the full explanation about how executors work and the full step-by-step -step guide on components, with Python and also C++, with manual composition, composition at runtime, etc. Then I have the perfect course for you. You can check out the link in the description. And thank you for watching. See you in the next one.